Hello everyone and welcome back in. Well here we are, episode number two of our Zegok, our Gundam figure here. Of course in episode number one we went through the assembly which was great and fun and quite quick to do. Then we added our base colors, adding us light gray, bluish camouflage scheme. A lot of fun there. Well in this episode we're going to take our nice shiny new Gundam and we're going to get it a little bit dirty and worn. Yep, we're going to do some weathering here. So buckle up guys, let's get ready to start weathering. Well, I guess the place to start here when we get with the weathering is to kind of talk about my approach, or at least my mindset at the moment. I mentioned in episode one that as I started working on the Gundam figure that I felt some apprehension, that being, how should I do this figure? How should I build this model, this Gundam? You know, trying to maybe look at other works that Gundam modelers had done, trying to follow their methods, their approaches, and things like that. Over the course of uh, the the build and the base painting and of course with the help of my build buddy Josh you know he said basically relax and do it your own way so by this point when we're getting into weathering yep we're doing it the Rick way so as I mentioned it's not a Gundam building Rick it's Rick building a Gundam and in this case it's Rick weathering a Gundam now of course those of you who are familiar with my work the videos and some of my work in the past you'll understand that I rely heavily on the use of oil paints to add the weathering and visual interest to my models but because of this subject, because this is a Gundam figure, or a Zegok here, there are some new viewers to this that have been attracted simply because of the subject matter itself. They want to see a Gundam figure. And for those people, there's a lot of them that have not seen my work before, which is understandable, and are unfamiliar with weathering and the use of oil paints. So we're going to slow down a little bit here, really kind of focus in on the use of oil paints, and I'll do a little bit of explanation, maybe a little further explanation on the use of oils and weathering. Let's start at some of the very basics here. Now, in the background, you'll notice this little piece of cardboard with the oil colors dabbed onto it. Why do we do this? Well, it's because oil paints themselves contain quite a bit of linseed oil. That's the carrier. But we don't necessarily want that. We want the pure color when we start working with our models. And so what we do is we put the oils onto the, the piece of cardboard. It wicks out the excess oil, and now we can dab into the paint. The second element here is the thinner that's just right off the screen to the right there. Thinner is very important here. That controls how thick or thin the paint is or how runny the paint is as you apply it to your surface. I use odorless thinner. I recommend using odorless thinner. As a general rule, the application of the oils onto your surface is quite dry, so not a lot of thinner into the paint itself, a dry application process. Let's take a quick time out and check on Josh, Cobra Plot, and see how he's doing with his Zegok. Recall that this is a buddy build. Both of us are doing a Zegok at the same time. He being a Gundam builder, myself being a more or less an armor builder, taking our two different styles, our two different approaches, and building the same model, and we're going to see how they look at the end. Boy, his is really looking great, don't you think? Well, let's return back to our own project here. So, now, the basic application technique for using oil paints is, could not be simpler. Really you only need two brushes and the tools we've already talked about, the oil paints on the palette and the odorless thinner. What I do is I just dab some color onto my brush. This is, and like I said, the colors being added to the, the surface are nearly dry. There's very little thinner and you can see I'm always cleaning off my brush, always drying it out. And the colors added, well, that depends on the area of the surface that I'm adding to. So I could be, say, on the camouflage pattern, as I'm doing now, adding a little bit of, say, lighter color gray or even teal color there you see on that palette to vary and add interest to the base level colors there. In other areas on the model where I might want to add dirt and scuffs or chips or rust marks, well, I have those colors on the palette as well. So I can, use, I can do everything all at the same time. It's not... It's not a process of going through and adding a filter, for instance, adding chips, for instance, and adding dirt, for instance. It all happens at the same time simultaneously, a real back and forth process. In terms of the brushwork, I add colors with one brush. Again, the colors being added to the surface are very, very dry, not a lot of thinner on them at all. And then I'll come back with a stippling brush and do a little bit of blending. And I'll, I could repeat that process over and over again if I want to build up the effects for more dramatic results. A special thank you to all my amazing Patreon members for your incredible support. Your contributions help me continue to create content for this channel. If you're not already a member, I invite you to join our Patreon community. 
As a member, you'll gain access to exclusive behind-the-scenes content, early releases, and more. I hope you'll consider joining Patreon and supporting this channel. Thank you very much. So as I'm working on this Gundam figure, one aspect or one consideration I really wanted to keep in mind here is the scale of the figure itself. So I'm used to working at 135th scale, sometimes 148th. And when you do your weathering, when you do chipping, you want to be consistent with that scale. Well, the Gundam here, the Zegok, it's at 1/100 scale, which means that a big brush stroke would be huge in terms of scale here. So I noticed that some of my brush strokes are a little bit out of out of phase here, a little bit too big for the size of the scale of the Gundam. Just a quick wipe down, just taking off just a little bit of the edge of some of those brush strokes, brought everything back into scale and smoothed over the surface. And as I mentioned in episode one, as I worked on the camouflage pattern, I had some overspray and so I have to reapply some of the colors, especially in some of the joints and such. And I really wanted this nice polished surface, so I'm using True Metal. This is kind of a wax paste. Just using that and buffing that into these surfaces here, and you can see what a wonderful effect this is. This happens to be dark aluminum, and it's just going to give a nice shine there between the armor plates. So in terms of the weathering, we could be pretty much done right now. We could have left it alone at the oil paint process, so it's done. We've got our chips there. We've got some discoloration. We've enhanced our base colors and such, but I wanted to go one more level here, and so I'm going to add a little bit of chipping here with the acrylic paints. Now, these are Gen 3 acrylics, and I'm going to do this old-fashioned, so no hairspray or chipping mediums, anything like that, no sponge painting. So this is going to be that old-fashioned kind of two-tone or three-tone chips. So we start with the lightest color. In this case, it's just an off-white, light gray color. And that's going to be the largest field of our chip. So that's the basic size of the chip. And then over the top of that, we'll come back in with some darker colors. I have a medium gray color and then even a darker gray color that would be representative of, say, if the chip went down to the metal finish underneath. It gives a nice three-dimensional appearance to our chips. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I haven't had this much fun in a long time. Paint chipping is a blast, but it's one of those techniques that can be overdone very, very quickly. So I highly, highly recommend that, you know, you, you work in small areas, add some chips here and there, walk away, come back and take a look at it, see if it looks in balance, work on a different area. It's a process, like I said, it's a lot of fun and it's very effective, but it can easily be overdone. And as long as we're talking about chipping and painting here, let's check in with Josh at Cobra Plaw here and see what he's up to. And yep, he's into the same area as I am, doing some micro chipping on his model as well. And don't these look great? Perfectly in scale. Wonderful technique here. As I mentioned earlier on, Josh is quite the expert builder. Well, returning back to my model, let's just kind of finish up a few things here. I'm going to add a bit of a metallic sheen, just using a number two pencil, just kind of edging some of these areas here where I've already added these chips, both with the oil paints and then with the acrylics as well. So there's a combination of different types of chips and different types of patina that's on this model. Just give it a little bit of a highlight, as I mentioned, of metallic here using the number two pencil, just a little bit of a sheen, just draw it on there a bit, just kind of buff it back with my finger. Very easy, very simple to do, but highly, highly effective. And now this brings me to a point where the model is, I don't know, we'll, we'll put 80% on it just because uh, we'll put a number on it. But I'm at, a, at this stage now where I don't want to take it much further because I am going to put this on a scenic base. So I want to get started on that base and I'll do the rest of the, you know, the application of the weathering and really start tying things together with the base a little bit later on. So for the time being, I'm going to set this model aside 
and we're going to prepare for what's coming up in episode number three, which is going to be all about ba building a base for this Zegok. But in the meantime, here we are with some photographs of the Zegok as it currently stands, like I said, about 80% here. As I begin to wrap up this episode, let me say thank you to Show Me What You Bought who provided the kit. They are a great online store. The link for them is in the description below. Please check them out. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to support this channel further, of course, I do have a Patreon page and the link for that is in the description below. As mentioned, we're going to be working on a base in the next episode. I uh, still don't quite know exactly what it's going to look like, but I hope it's going to be dynamic and I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. So until next time, guys, take care and we'll see you again. Happy modeling.